So there's a Mark Giuliana beat that's been stuck in my head ever since I used it to frame an example of something in an earlier video. Ice cream Saturday brunch and lunch and lunch. You probably know what I'm talking about. It's from the Jazz Night in America live at the Rough Trade concert. Just roll a little bit of that. So this is a live version of a tune called Girl from Mark Giuliano's beat music record. And a little while back, I thought it would be fun to play along with the tune. Brunchin, lunchin, lunchin. Little did I know, it's actually a lot more complex than it looks. Here's Mark playing it. Ice cream Saturday, brunchin, lunchin, lunchin. Looks pretty darn easy, doesn't it? Well, turns out there's a lot more to it. That's why I say it's deceptively complex. But in the course of teaching you guys this beat, I guarantee it's gonna make your drumming better. By the time you're able to play this beat, you'll have learned a lot of lessons about something I call microtime, which is the spacing between your subdivisions and how to make that a lot more precise when you want it to be. You can be loose when you want it to be. Dudes, we're gonna break it down. We're gonna get into Mark Giuliano's beat, why it's more complex than it seems, how it'll make your drumming better. Stay tuned. So guys, before we commence with the lesson, I'm gonna be throwing a lot of notational stuff at you. And the message I want you to take away is you do not need to remember that, including at the end, I've got a little surprise. I'm gonna spoil it right now. We're gonna show you the form of the entire section of the tune. Don't need to write any of that down. It'll all be transcribed for you. Free download of the transcription and the form of the tune if you click the link below the player, completely free. Anyway, download pitch over. Let's first talk about where the simplest form of this beat comes from. And of course, I'm talking about the reggae roots. So the basic beat in the B section of Mark Giuliano's tune, Girl, has layers, let's just say. But at its very basic, especially the live version, it's just based on a reggae. In the live version, his bandmate Nick Semrad is playing the one and two and three and four, and that's so characteristic of reggae, so let's just start with the reggae beat. Two, three, four. There's your basic reggae beat, one, two, three, four, but of course, Mark's doing kind of a Stuart Copeland reggae, which is like reggae, but with a backbeat. So it would be something like this, two, three, four. And of course, in beat music, they're doing it with a straight 30 seconds. So instead of it's so the tempo of the B section of girl is something like bam, 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 bam. one, two, three, four. So you could literally just play this. If you're in a pinch, if you're in a jam, you could literally just play it three, four. And that's often something good to figure out when you're at a gig. If you're sight reading something that's challenging or if you're just learning a tune, you really want to find the minimum you can play, what I like to call the minimum effective beat, so you can still be functional in that context. And if you're just playing that, you'd probably be functional. It would definitely be a lot more functional than if you try to do a sloppy version of what Mark does. So that's the very, very, very most basic part of the beat. So hopefully that's a good overview of the minimum effective beat. If you had to play this tune in a pinch, you didn't want to memorize all the crazy 30 second note bass drum placements. That's it, you can play that. But now we're gonna to start to get into what makes this more complicated than it looks. And it's gonna get a little more advanced, but I urge you guys to stick with it. See if you're up to it, or if you're one of those hot dogs who thinks you can play anything, see if you're the equal of this beat. Gonna get into the complicated stuff right now. Okay, now let's talk about the elephant in the room. It's the kick pattern. Let's roll a little bit of Mark playing it. Ice cream Saturday, brunch and lunch and lunch. And let's roll a little of me playing it. Ice cream Saturday, brunch and lunch and lunch. lunch. 
So it's something like. Two ways I want to practice this. One is just literally with quarters with the lead hand on some surface. Let's slow it way down. Two, three, four. Even slower. Three, four. Got it? Next, we add the backbeat, but keep the quarter notes. Three, four. You can make those eights if you want. It gives it a little more urgency. Three, four. But remember, if you're gonna play this on the gig, if you're gonna play it at tempo, you gotta be able to play it in a relaxed way. So you might wanna just stick with quarters on the hats for now. So remember to be like, bum, bum, bum. Two, three, four. And that's the basic gist of the beat. So that's the kick drum pattern, but there's a lot more going on. You're not off the hook yet. There's a lot more going on that makes this even more difficult. Of course, I'm talking about the hi-hat embellishments and also the crazy 16 notes in the left foot. Here's how to play that. Okay, so now let's talk about some of those embellishments that really make this beat pop. I'm gonna do two categories. One category I can kind of handle. The next category I, I'm over my head with. So the first is ghosted notes on the hats or on the hat stack or whatever it is you're playing with both hands. If you have a hat stack like Mark does in the recording, it's probably easier because you have both hands in front of you. I like to use this method where I rotate the left hand under the right hand as needed so I'm not way out here and going back and forth. The point is you're gonna add some 30 second note embellishments. And let me play you the pattern I kind of figured out around this. So three, four. Slow it down a little. Three, four. Quick takeaway is this. That's your kernel. Everything else you can fudge. For e and a. So you can fill in quarters, you can fill in eighths, you can continue to embellish for the rest of the bar. Let's hear what it would sound like with just fudging quarters. For and. That sounds perfectly acceptable. You can throw in some eights in the latter half of the bar. Four and. And you can even play with it and throw in some more 30 seconds. Four and. One embellishment you should be aware of is that at certain parts of the phrase, and we'll get into this more in the next chapter, there's a, so in context, for N. And that's literally just, Mark plays it with the right hand. Okay, finally, the bit that Mark does that I can't do at all, which is keep 16ths with the hats. So I can do it more slowly. If you want to practice this, I recommend playing it slowly. Just play quarters or eighths with the lead hand and first just practice the basic scaffold of the beat. So four and. So 
So Mark does this at full speed, completely cleanly, and also playing the 30 second note embellishments with the hands. Notch that up another 20, 30 BPM, and you got it. Anyway, if you're trying to play like Mark, that's how you get the gig. So normally, I'd say this concludes the lesson, download your free download, which you should. Then you can get out of here and we'd roll the theme music. But some of you are probably wondering if I made the effort, if I went the extra mile to actually dive into what the form of that phrase is, how you'd actually notate it. And the answer is, Yes, I've got you guys. So for those of you who want to stick around, the real Mark Giuliano beat music nerds, I present to you. The thing. Okay, let's talk about this. And I'm going to need to zoom the camera out again. I think. Reverse Casey Neistat. So the phrase is eight bars long, if you're counting in halftime. So that would be like, if those are your quarters. It's 16 bars long if quarters are here, which is more of a jazz way of counting it. I'm going to ask Chris, I'm going to plead with Chris, our, our intrepid transcriber who's way more than that. He's actually an excellent college drum professor who occasionally slums to do transcriptions for us because he's way better at it than I am. I'm going to ask if he can do both a... a quarter note here version and also quarter note here. So if you assume the quarter notes here, then it's eight notes that Mark G is playing on the clap sound effect on the rolling pad in this part. How many times will these unmentionables? Couple things to know about this. At the end of the phrase, there's a ensemble figure that sounds like that everyone hits together. You'll know it when you hear it. Here it is. Saturday brunch and lunch and lunch. So that falls in bar seven of the tune. In bars four and eight, there's a figure that Mark plays on the snare drum with the right hand that I talked about in the drum part, which is ba da ba ba da. So it's written out here, assuming that slower quarter note. So it's a bunch of sixteenths and thirty seconds and tied over. So actually it's more useful to think of it as this. It's just ba da ba ba da but double time. And that's what that is. And that's what that is. So the other thing is when they first introduce this section of the tune, when they, let's call it the breakdown, when they break it down, when that Recording this sample says, how many times are these unmentionables going to be mentioned? How many times will these unmentionables be mentioned before? That's actually bar three. So how many times are these unmentionables going to be mentioned before blah, 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 blah. Ensemble in here. Mark plays the ba da ba ba da And then when you get Nick on the doom, ba 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 Those are eighth off beats. That's the top of the form. And it goes through all eight bars. That'll be painstakingly transcribed for you. Eventually we'll get back into the Bon Gowanus uh, co-workspace so I can do that for you on a proper whiteboard. I had to sneak into a conference room two years ago. That's the lesson. That's the extra credit bit for you guys. And remember, this transcript I've been talking about, downloadable below the player. And now's probably the time to mention that if you liked it when I played the drum cover, let's roll just a little of that. Luncheon, luncheon, luncheon. Maybe you're going to try to play this yourself. Maybe you're going to realize it's not as easy as it sounds to play it clean. Maybe you're going to think, huh, and it didn't do such a bad job. Then you're going to realize just what a level Mark Giuliano's on, even though it sounds simple. But if you reach that point, you want a free resource to make your drumming better. I recommend my three video mini course to take you from intermediate to breakthrough in three weeks or less. Guarantee it. Otherwise, I'll return all your money. You can get that by clicking below the player, you might be wondering, well, didn't you just say you could get the transcription? Yes! Two birds with one stone. A single link. Click below the player, get both. Learn the transcription, improve your drumming. Dudes, it's been real. Thanks to Beat Music for being amazing. Thanks to everybody for watching. See you again in another lesson of the week.
his band member name? Let's literally look this up right now. What am I? What am I trying to say next? What am I saying after that? Do I? Can I even? I'd like to phone a friend. <laughs> so that'll be chill. Ow. Bling, bling. Wow, what up, what up, bum, bum.